this week on Carolina All Out. Here it is. Well, I think we can do a lot with this gun, Chris. All right, she's done. College courses for custom rim fires. This is Carolina All Out. This week, the All Out crew is once again headed back to Troy, North Carolina to visit with our friends at Montgomery Community College. This is becoming a regular occurrence on the show as we've spent time with the boys at the gunsmithing program, turning Chris's old 270 into a fine shooting instrument. Now we're back with another gun of Chris's. This time it's an old Ruger 1022 that he's had since he was a teenager. In addition to their curriculum, the gunsmithing program puts on five-day classes shaped specifically around this popular gun, and lead instructor Mark Dye has some special options for Chris's gun. Mark, here it is, the 1022 that's been with me for so long. Well, I think we can do a lot with this gun, Chris. So we're gonna do the same things that we'd normally do with our students. We're gonna get some baseline groups with it. So we're just gonna shoot it right now in its current state just to see what we get. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna do a lot of work to it and see if we can improve upon that. I have no doubt that you guys can improve this thing. What you did with the 270, I'm so excited to see this thing become something that it hasn't ever been. And I would assume that's what it's gonna to happen to it. So, well, I guess we load it up and then we'll try to put some. Yeah, shoot a couple of groups and see what we get. Okay, all right, sounds good. Okay. All right, Chris, you think you got some good ones? Well, I felt good on the bench. We'll see what the gun did now, right? Well, let's go take a look and see what you got. Okay, sounds good. Well. All right, so we've got about an inch or an inch and a half at 50. Uh -huh. For considering the configuration you got, that's really not bad, but I think we can do better. Oh, well, that's gonna be interesting to see that better. So we're talking about hole in hole type, sort of, sort of shooting with these? I think so, yeah. Definitely under a half inch at 50. Well, what little bit I know about shooting that if we're doing trigger work, that's going to be a big part of it because, my gosh, that thing is just like, if I haven't shot it in so long, and that thing was just like, ugh. No matter you know. how accurate the gun is, if you don't have a trigger that you can pull, it's going to be hard to shoot good groups with it. Got it. So let's talk real quickly about what we're going to do with the gun. All right, so we're going to put a different barrel on it. We've got a Ruger factory barrel that uh, we're going to set back so we can decrease the amount of bullet jump before the bullet reaches the lands and grooves. Um, we're going to put it in a different stock. We've got a, a really nice Wook stock that we're going to put that in. We're going to put a different scope on it, and we're going to do trigger work on the gun. And from there, we should be able to get some, some nice groups and have a, a much nicer piece for you to do your squirrel hunts with. I'm excited to see. Now, you've been telling me about this Wook stock and everything, mm -hmm. so I'm very excited to see what that's going to be all yeah, about. Yeah, that's a real interesting company that's here in North Carolina. They're out of Hickory. and. Uh, Ah. Yeah, I think you're going to like what we've got there. All right, let's go do it. Chris. Glenn, how's it going? Doing well, man. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you. Haven't seen you since the 270 build. Yeah, it's been a while. How's the shooting? Shooting awesome. Good deal. Made a beautiful 25-yard shot on a buck. I saw that buck. It was a nice deer. <laughs> was a nice deer. I'll take it any day. 25. Right. Maybe we'll get a chance to stretch it out at some point. That's there. right. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. Well, what do we have going on today? Well, Chris brought in this old uh, 1022. We right. just got off the range. We did some groups down there for baseline. Okay. Uh, we're going to accurize it for him. We're going to get you to do some of the barrel work. Glad to. So we're going to turn it over to you for that. Cool. Well, let's uh, get this thing tore apart and do some barrel work. Sweet. So what we're going to do, we're going to set the barrel up. We're not going to use this barrel. We're going to use a, a factory Ruger hammer forged barrel. Okay. It's a 920 diameter bull barrel. It's got a really cool uh, texture to it from the hammer forging process. 
Uh, we'll take that barrel and actually set the tenon back on it a little bit. What we're wanting to do is we're wanting to get the, uh, the tip of that projectile a little bit closer to the lands so it right. doesn't have to jump so far. So we'll, um, we'll set the tenon back, we'll set the shoulder back on that barrel, mm -hmm. uh, we'll recrown it, it'll be ready to go back in the receiver. And the whole time we're going to be using a dummy cartridge to actually insert it into the chamber. Right. And once we feel that that dummy cartridge has engaged on the lands the way that I like, at that point we'll be done. Okay. We'll be back with more gunsmithing fun after these messages. Carolina All Out is brought to you by AgriSupply. It's what's inside. Carolina Cooker, Tools, Cooks, Legends. The North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission, celebrating 75 years of wildlife conservation. Chad Lee Boat and Marine, the South's premier boating superstore. And by DNH RV and Marine, your truck camper destination in the Southeast. We'll be back with more Carolina All Out. All right, well now we're at the lathe. Okay. Like I say, I've got this uh, factory Ruger uh, 920 diameter hammer forged barrel already indicated in. I've got it in a six jaw chuck, got a test indicator on there. She dialed in to within two tenths mm -hmm. of a thou. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull the indicator away, touch off and start, um, start making my cuts. Okay, I remember something like this process we did last time on a lathe. Yes, sir, it's very similar. Like I say, completely different firearms platform, um, but the principles that we're gonna hold to are the same. Okay, yeah. all right. All right. No resistance whatsoever, so we're still not where we need to be. Okay. Oh, I'm feeling it a little bit? Yep, see how it's right there? And kind of it's press it sticky. there. Look at that. Ah. That's it? Yeah. That's it. Now, we don't want to go, we don't want to go any further than that. All right, because if we do, then that's going to limit you only to this type of um, ammunition. If, of course, if you were using live ammunition, it right. would limit you to this. Um, so yeah, so we're good there. So we've taken 30 thousandths off. I need to take 30 thousandths off of the shoulder as well. So at this point, the, uh, the barrel's ready to come out of the lathe. Look at that. Look at oh yeah, I see that design you got mm -hmm. in it. I don't know if you guys can see that or not there. And like I say, that's all part of the hammer forging process when they're actually you know, manufacturing the barrel. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, have a nice looking mill work there. Well, okay, so what's next? Well, next we need to, um, we can go ahead and modify the receiver. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the little tricks that we'll do on the receiver is um, drill a hole in the back of it. Because you know one of the, the shortcomings, if you will, the 1022 is you can't clean it like you would a bolt action rifle. Right. Where you can take the bolt out and get to the breech and clean from the breech to the muzzle as you should. Right. But the 1022, you got to come from the muzzle to the breech. So what we'll do is we'll drill a hole in the back of that receiver that's absolutely in line with the chamber so that you can pull the barrel action out of the stock, use a conventional cleaning rod from the breech to the muzzle as you normally would. That way you don't create any wear to the crown or to the muzzle. And um, it's a little better way of doing business. All right, lock the tail stock down. Now when, you, when I fire the machine up, this thing's gonna be moving around, um, you know, kind of eccentric there. And you think, my goodness. You yeah, know, it's gonna be a big a gonna wobble be a big out hole. But it's not, because like I say, the receiver's on that mandrel. So basically we are gonna be drilling right to the right center to, line. Yeah. Yep. To say that center drill now has um, created a nice pilot hole for the quarter inch drill bit here that I'm going to use to follow. All right, That's she's done. Good. So really the only other things that we need to do to the receiver is we'll come in on the underside of it here, mm -hmm. use some Scotch-Brite just to uh, clean that surface up a little bit, um, basically sand it for lack of a better term. Right. All right, just kind of clean it up a little bit in there. That way that the uh, the top of the bolt, as it rides against it, it's got a nice smooth surface. So I got you. Mm -hmm. Again, the more consistent we can make things, the more accurate the rifle's mm -hmm. gonna be. 
So it needs to be cleaned up. We'll uh, retap these holes for you to make sure they're nice and clean. Okay. And I assume that somewhere along the line, we're gonna do a little Cerakote before you can get it Ooh. looking brand new. I love that Cerakote. So, yeah. That's cool stuff. All right, well, I think that we'll head back over, get ready to hand things off to Alex. Okay. Let Alex um, start to work on the bolt for you. That tag team again. That's right. All getting right. Her, getting her done. That sounds good. All right. We've still got more steps to this gun build coming up. The Fishbone Facts brought to you by the North Carolina Wildlife Resources Commission. How many NC Wildlife Managed Shooting Ranges are there in North Carolina? A, six, B, 12, C, nine. Find out the answer after the break. Carolina All Out is brought to you by the North Carolina Marine and Estuary Foundation. Think Coastal, Bear Creek Arsenal, performance through innovation, Farms and Land Realty, selling land is what we do, Montgomery Community College, blaze your trail, and by Creek Boats, the ultimate in small boating. We'll be back with more Carolina All Out. How many NC Wildlife Managed Shooting Ranges are there in North Carolina? The answer is A, six. Learn more about our state's shooting ranges at ncwildlife.org. Now that the barrel and receiver work is complete, it's time to work on the bolt. All right, well, who do we have here? This is Alex Williams. Alex, nice to meet you, Chris. Pleasure to meet you. Heard about you now. Yeah, Alex is a former student, and he's been with the program now for about uh, five years. He's the NRA program facilitator. Okay, gotcha. And I hear the 22 guru. Yeah, I do have a love for 22s. So do I. <laughs> so, um, it looks like we're going to be working on your 1022 today. 1022. Yeah. Bolt. All right. So one of the things first we got to do to get this thing to shoot right is we got to adjust the headspace. Most guns, headspace is done in the barrel. On 22s, it's actually done on the bolt itself. Okay. So we're going to take this and get on the grinder here and cut through it. Some pretty hard stuff, so we need the grinder. Gotcha. And I remember this from the last build we did. We used it when we were truing the recoil lug on my 270 rifle. The recoil lug. I remember that one. Okay, cool. We'll get to use that thing. It was pretty neat. Oh, yeah. Thing. All right. Thank you, Lynn. Chris, you're welcome. Alex, All right. have fun. Thank you, Lynn. So what, what tends to be the issue is that we are looking at the height difference between this surface that the rim sits on and this sit surface that stops on the bolt. Now what we're looking for is about 42 and a half to 43 thou in height. Now a, a tall one is going to be about 46 and that's way too loose. Um, yours is 48. So, wow. so it, it's significantly larger than it should be as well as what we generally going to see on these older arrows is that there's going to be a high spot. So the bolt has been sitting crooked the whole time that you've been shooting. And consistency is the key. Consistency is the key, absolutely. Okay, all right. All right, so it looks like we're currently sitting at 45 thou, and we just clean up the face so there's no high spots. Right. So it, it took us, you know, all the way from 48 to 45 to actually get it straight. Okay. So now we're gonna take that face straight down until we get it to the depth and height that we want. All right, looks like that was a fast pass. Oh yeah, man, nice and shiny. That means it is... Even all the way across. Even all the way across. So that's gonna sit flat up against that the back place. of the barrel. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Okay. So what's next? Uh, the next part is actually going to be part of function, not accuracy. So we're going to take the bolt and we're going to round the back side of it. So that way it goes over the hammer smoother. It's going to make it have a little less of that feel of the action moving. It's going to okay. make it smoother. Okay. Very cool. All right. And here we are. Look at that. So we've got it rounded down, and what that's going to do is make it so that the action feels smoother as it rides over the hammer. Okay, all right. And now the bolt's complete. Okay, I'm back with Mark now. 
Well, so we've got your trigger group here, Chris. Now that we've got the barrel work done, we've got some bolt work done, we're gonna see what we can do for your trigger. Okay. So this is your typical factory trigger. It's around six pounds of, of pressure necessary to release the hammer. Okay. So we're gonna reduce that by about half. We're gonna end up with about a three pound trigger. We also wanna reduce the amount of creep, which is the amount of mechanical slide of the parts against each other before the hammer is actually released. The third thing we're gonna do is to put an over travel screw in your trigger to limit the amount of trigger travel after the hammer's released. Okay. And, and what that means for you is that you know, after all this is done, you're gonna have a much crisper, lighter trigger that's gonna be easier for you to manipulate and it's gonna allow you to shoot better groups. All right, Chris, so we, now we've got your trigger down to the weight we were looking for. Right. So about two and, two and a half, two and three quarter pounds. Uh, we've got an over travel screw in it that's going to limit the amount of trigger travel after the, the hammer falls. And we've reduced the amount of creep, so it shouldn't have a lot of slide in the trigger before it's released. Okay. All that should come together to give you a nice, good trigger pull that'll allow you to produce better accuracy. So now what's left, we can stick this thing back in the receiver. Uh -huh. And then from there, we've got some exciting stuff. We can put it in this nice Wook stock that, was, uh, that we brought for this occasion. Um, so it's, a, it's an interesting chassis type stock that's a mixture of wood and metal. Um, so it's got the nice classic look of wood, but it's got all the advantages of a chassis. Wow. We'll see if we can get that together and uh, you'll almost be ready to shoot. Okay, sweet. More Carolina All Out after these messages. Carolina All Out is brought to you by the Dixie Deer Classic, Buckshot Tree Stands, High and Dry Waders, Ugly Buck Wildlife Products, and by these fine sponsors. We'll be back with more Carolina All Out. Now available at Agra Supply, AgPro Turf Chemicals. This new product line features professional grade herbicides, fungicides, and insecticides specifically designed to treat turf and large lawns. Why professional grade? Because it offers higher concentrations. This ensures a more effective product and less applications, which saves you time and money. And those are two things you could use to get you into the outdoors more. Keeping those pesky pets and weeds at bay is paramount, and AgriSupply has a great line of sprayers and lawn care tools to apply AgPro chemicals safely and effectively. The entire AgPro selection is available for dropship only to certain states, so check out agrisupply.com to see if they're available in your area. Then get back to pursuing what you love. Looks like something's been going on with this thing since the last time we saw it. Yeah, I think we got all the work done here for you now. Oh, that's beautiful. Ooh, I'm seeing all sorts of cool stuff on this thing. Yeah, we, we Cerakoted the receiver and the trigger guard. Uh, we had a friend over at Warrior Tribe Tactical put your logo on the bolt, so you got your little fish yes. ammo there. And we've mounted an Athlon scope on it, and we should be ready to put it together and take it down to the range. That is fantastic. So nothing we did on this rifle is anything that a student couldn't do in a five-day class. We've got uh, short-term classes we do on Team 22 stuff. Lynn Fagan teaches that class. Lynn did your barrel work on this. Yep. You know, he'd set the chamber back. This is a factory barrel, by the way. Ruger factory barrel, but it'll, uh, it'll really shoot. Um, Alex Williams, he helped with, with setting the headspace on the bolt, and then I, I did the trigger work with you. Um, now we've got all the, all the bells and whistles on there with the scope. Got it in your chassis. I think we're gonna be able to go shoot some groups with it. All right. Yeah, we've got a fantastic group right there, Chris. And there wasn't nothing wrong with that one. Yeah, yeah, that's probably a quarter inch though at 50 out of a, oh. a semi-auto 22. <laughs> the testament of Montgomery Community College and your gunsmithing program here. Taking a gun, and you can see from right here what this thing was before. Which from, most guys would be pretty excited about that, but. <laughs> probably from an inch and a quarter to a quarter of an inch. That's, that, that's, a, that's a big change. That is amazing. Thank you, Mark. Sure. Again, another amazing rebuild that these guys have done with just a regular old gun that I had. We go from this to this. 
That's amazing. Amazing. Well, I couldn't stand it. I had to get out and shoot this beautiful gun that the boys at Montgomery Community College built for us. So we're up in Granville County today. Decided we'd just take a little walk around, see if we can take out a few squirrels, and just show you guys how good this thing shoots. It's pretty easy. Hey, it was when you put the crosshairs on them with a thing like this, it's gonna happen. I'm telling you what. Small one, <laughs> but a squirrel. But a squirrel. Good eating. Now that one will be a good eating one now for sure. Well. We did what we set out to do with this rifle, and that is to come out and shoot a squirrel. I'm gonna add him to some other squirrels that I have uh, at the house, cause the sun's going down and we've got a little ride to get back. But this here is something that I'm very proud of. The fellas at the Montgomery Community College gunsmithing program turned a gun into something that is really a work of art. I'm very happy with this, and I'm looking forward to doing more with Montgomery Community College, and of course, love being in the outdoors in North Carolina. It's gonna be a, a thing that we are gonna to continue to do for years and years and years. I'm Chris Douglas signing off for Carolina All Out, and remember, our state is your next adventure. Awesome. Daisy.